Hey, ladies and gents, welcome to the show. Scotty Mortimer here with my guest today, Toby King. Love your brother. So great to have you here. Toby is one of my best friends, and I'm really stoked to be able to bring you some beautiful people who are worldly, open-minded, open-hearted. And today, this is going to be really fun. We're just sort of chatting before we got started. We're just like, let's just play already. Let's go. So guys, dive in. Toby King grew up in the Crystal Castle, which for those Australians sort of in the, in the New Age conscious movement know all about it. Uh, it's a beautiful castle that his mother and father have built over the last 30, 35 years. 36. 36 years. There you go. They now have 200,000 visitors a year. Is that correct? Uh, Give or take. Like that. Give or take. About there, right? Yeah. Uh, massive business, 70 plus staff, grounds, experiences, the largest crystals in the world. We'll talk about a bit of that. The geode crystals, crystal caves, everything. And it's, a, it's a business that is a part of the conscious awakening of humanity, showing people what's possible. You've got a Tibetan stupa, uh, one of the seven in the world, Kalachakra Stupa, yep. um, recognized by the Tibetan, by the Dalai Lama. You guys have visited the Dalai Lama. You've got photos of the Dalai Lama. <laughs> I've seen you when you're a young fella. Anyway, Toby has grown up in a world that, it's, it, you know, the last 35 years in Byron Bay, uh, where the castle is, Byron Shire, it's just like at the forefront of this awakening of consciousness. And you've grown up in that. Now, one thing that I, I, I love about Toby before we dive into it is Toby and I have known each other since you were 12 years old. 12. Sure we met at the Green School in Bali and you were a student there. Well, when we first met, you came for a program and I was one of the facilitators. Mm -hmm. And then you moved there and you went to the Green School. How long were you at the Green School? Eight years. Eight years at the Green yeah. School in Bali. So go and check out the Green School. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, and I'm nearly, so you're 20 years old now. Yes. I'm 38, nearly 39. Yep. And I remember when I was double your age, and I'm like, yeah. man, my best friend is ago. half my age. <laughs> and you used to come up to our place when we were hosting bonfires and parties. I think you were yeah. 16 at the time. Yeah. And I remember everyone just tripping out, <laughs> listening to Toby. We'd sit there for hours just <laughs> listening to Toby. And everyone would always ask like, how old are you? And you're like 16. The wisdom that you have, the, the, the life that you lived is amazing. I'm honoured to call you a friend. And anyway, that's the intro. So let's dive in. This is going to be a great time together. Um, so let's have some fun. Welcome, brother. Thank you for having me. It's amazing, good to be here. Amazing to, to be had. I'm just stoked to get you on the, on the show. So yeah. tell us a little bit. I did a bit of intro there. Mm. Um, you know, what was it like growing up in the Crystal Castle? Let's probably start there in this world of entrepreneurship and conscious awakening at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting time. Uh, you know, you talk about it as being on the forefront of awakening or consciousness, but it's interesting because the way it started was just my dad liked crystals. It was, it was really as simple as that. I mean, he was selling crystals out of his backpack. He uh, came the up to Byron Bay. crazy hippie back in the day. 100%. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> complete hippie. Uh, Osho disciple. Just went up to Byron, went to a Christmas party up there and saw this place and was like, you know what? Uh, let's get it. Let's get it. Um, I remember he, what, he maxed out credit cards or something to get the... Yeah, we, we don't talk too much about that. Gotcha, gotcha, um, gotcha. <laughs> but he found a way. He Crazy found a way. With a vision. Crazy hippie with a vision. Found a way to, uh, to secure the, the property and then, yeah, just started putting crystals in it. And like growing up there, it was, it was mostly just being around crystals. It kind of felt like, I don't know, being around trees. It was just normal. Just normal. Yeah. And then leaving for so long... It was interesting because throughout my childhood, I kind of, I had various rebellious periods where As I was like, ah, oh, I don't, yeah, we all have that. I was like, ah, my dad wears sarongs. I'm going to wear a suit. <laughs> that was, that was one of them. And then it was, okay, whatever it is. Okay, let's go. Let's travel. Let's get away from this world of Byron Bay, this, this whole area. And then coming back, it, it's like, wow, that's, that's something special. There's yeah. something special there. And it's interesting how that the only time where I really appreciated it was after a long period of separation. Yeah. Well, that's normal. We all go through that, right? Yeah. And you're still young, man. You're 20. Yeah. Like, but to, to be where you're at now, you know, it took me a lot longer to figure out <laughs> those sort of relationships with my father. Yeah. How is your dad? He's a crazy entrepreneur. I love your parents, by the way. Mm. We've spent a lot of time together, obviously. Yeah. As you know, you guys now know too. Yeah. Um, but... How is it, uh, you know, having a father and a mother, but I know your dad's very driven in the business mm -hmm. in a big way, as this entrepreneur who is bridging, you know, 
when you say it's full of crystals, we're talking some serious crystals. Like the whole, everywhere you go is just the biggest, massive crystals. Yeah. How big are those two geo? The, the They're five and a half meters tall. Five and a half meters. Yeah. And about people that are, seven ton, eight ton each. Seven ton, eight ton yeah. each, right? And when you talk a geo, it's like millions of crystals, thousands of crystals mm-hmm. inside this bubble that's formed. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're like a centerpiece. Then these caves, like how old are these crystal caves? About 200 to 300 million years old. 300 million years old. Yeah. Now from where? In, from Uruguay. From Uruguay yeah. in South America. Yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. And your dad's like, I just have to buy these. Pretty he, much. He won't tell much. anyone how much he paid, but we know Definitely there are a lot. Not. <laughs> yeah. 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 There were, there were a few articles written about how he uh, mortgaged the property for them. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. But the cave was... Um, he, he went for the, the two geodes yeah. and then when he got there, he was looking at the geodes and he turned around and he had brought my sister who is way more into crystals than I am. Yeah. I'm sort of growing on them gotcha, um, gotcha. over time, but she loves crystals and he turned around and he saw her in a cave and he was like sitting in the cave, sitting in the cave. And yeah. she said, dad, we got to get it. So, uh, yeah, he didn't even think that he was going to get those caves and they right. counted as about a bit over a million crystals within that one cave a million yeah. in one cave yeah. and that's the one you sit in or the big yeah. one oh, that's the big one that's the big yeah. one yeah behind the curtains yeah yeah, yeah. cool cool yeah. yeah that's incredible that cave oh my it's god you've got little peak holes that you look through yeah amazing so he mortgages the property or so the story goes <laughs> something like that in yeah. order to get these massive so that's how expensive these things are but the man's just obsessed with crystals mm-hmm. and my understanding of of the story with uh crystal castle is your dad was originally wholesaling crystals from there and then people were yes. coming yep. and sort of buying stuff and like, wow, this place is amazing. It's all in the hills mm-hmm. and the forest and, and, you know, his crystals around and set it up nice. And then he realized, hey, there's probably more money in people coming here than in the wholesaling. And then he yep. started to build the castle and the retail side of it. Now you've got the cafe and the experiences and everything. Yeah, started. I mean, it was just a house. Like the yeah. whole it's building. Where you lived, or they lived first they before lived, you were born. Yeah, they yeah. lived in that house before I was born. Yeah. Um, and people were coming up eventually people started coming up just to see it. And that's when they put just, they, they lined the pathways with rose quartz. They went, Amazing. all right, now we, can, uh, now we can start to make something out of the site as opposed to just a normal business. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It's interesting, like entrepreneurship, many times you don't know where it's going to take you. No. Like you start out, all right, I'm going to sell crystals. You start out, okay, I'm just going to do e-commerce or whatever else. And then something else pops up, something big happens and just, kind of have to follow that path. Yeah, I mean, that's right. that's my understanding of how that worked. Yeah. He didn't yeah, really have right. a plan. <laughs> well, 36 years in the future to plan that you'd have signs on the highway directing to what was once your home. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you get off the airport at Coolangatta Airport and mm. when you're waiting for your bags, it's Crystal Castle across the whole wall. Yeah. Like, it's massive. It's a big deal now. Yeah. And a hippie with a vision and a backpack full of crystals. There are a few of those. Yeah, well, there yeah. is. Well, Steve Jobs is one of them, <laughs> yeah. right? Crazy hippie. Hippie and with a vision. Hippie with a vision. Yeah. Look what he's done. And so you're a hippie also, but you've definitely got that <laughs> entrepreneurial spark. And that's why yeah. you and I uh, always vibe so beautifully. Mm. So where are you at these days? You left green school. How long ago did you finish uh, green school? Three, two, two, three years ago? Two and a half. Two and a half yeah, years ago? Yeah, nearly three years ago. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And yeah. so... For the, well, let's talk a little bit about green school first and then we'll yeah. go into... Because we're sort of looking at your foundation and background here, yeah. which is exciting, you know, growing up in the bloody Crystal Castle and travelling the world with your dad and meeting the Dalai Lama and, you know, there's so many things, cool things that you've done. But going to the green school, so tell us a little bit about... Like, I, I was there, obviously, that's where we met. I spent uh, three years in Bali, two years working at the green school, uh, doing outdoor education for those people that are listening. Um, you and I met on a program called the Green Super Camp. Uh, which was amazing. Uh, as I said, you were 12. Yep. And then you went back to Australia and then you, your whole family moved to Bali so that you could be at the green school effectively, right? It was a, a good excuse. A good excuse. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. i got to say they really wanted to they go wanted to Bali to be anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, now they've got the beautiful home in Bali as yeah. well. So they spent a lot of time there. So, okay, they love Bali, but it was great yeah. for you to be at green school it too. It was, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your green school experience. Maybe explain a little bit about what the green school is. Green School is interesting. Um, it was started by a guy called John Hardy, another entrepreneur, hippie yeah. with a vision. Hippie with a vision. Um, and a jewellery guy. So a crystal, jewellery guy, jewelry. crystals. Yeah, yeah interesting, uh, interesting connection there. Yeah, he had some daughters and went, hey, I don't like the schooling in America. Um, let's look at what we can do. Mm. And so he built this place in Bali. It's 
you know, it has the biggest bamboo building in the world, as far as I know, right across the river as part of the same um, family. They they work oh, yeah. on it. There's the chocolate factory chocolate, yeah. next to it. Um, and yeah, it's just a bamboo school in the jungle with quite an alternative education style mm -hmm. focused on the way they talk about it is it's focused on student learning. So it's student centered learning as opposed to subjects. Mm -hmm. so that's why, you know, in high school, it's much more like a university course where you can go in and you pick your own classes, you pick your um, electives, you can do a lot of more training based on what you're fascinated in and interested in. It's amazing. And I found a huge amount of value from that mm. because I was always interested in filmmaking yeah. and uh, business and those two things. I just, you know, in the, in the last maybe three years, I just spent 80% of my time working on that stuff, learning marketing and consulting and meeting with mentors and going while being at while school. being at school which is just while incredible. being at school and getting credits for going all right i want to go into the jungle and make a film about orangutans yep. and they go okay see you in a month and then i get credits for that if i deliver the work and of they course. can have a look at it yeah so i mean it was it was really valuable for me mm. i think because uh some people can get lost in that sort of thing without they that don't. rigid structure yeah yeah for the traditional education yeah i think it depends on what you, uh, what drives you. And for me, it was trying to learn more about those specific things. Yeah. But if you're just sort of open to a lot, then it's going to be a little more difficult to figure out which path to take. Interesting. Because it's student-centered learning. So you get yeah. to choose what you want. But like you're saying, a lot of people when you're at high school, I don't know what I want. Yeah. Right? It's like, do yeah. I go this way? Do I go that way? But at least there is that flexibility and that conversation about, hey, where do you want to go in life? What do you yeah. want to do? Yeah. Rather, I mean, in, in traditional education, in grade 11, you get to choose, here in Australia anyway, right? Mm. Grade 11 and 12, you get to choose uh, your subjects for the next two years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which is great, but they're still very rigid subjects and you do it for two years. Yeah. My understanding of green school, it's like project-based. There's six weeks at a time, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah, they were all six-week blocks. So, so what happens? You go and choose what, what you want to do in that six weeks. Mm -hmm. You go and deliver a project based on that and it could be biology and specific to how leaves photosynthesize for example I'm making shit up here mm -hmm. right and then you go and learn all about that one subject get really specific and then deliver a result a, a paper or um, a project of some sort and then you get credits on that and then you choose again for the next six weeks is that how it works uh you can choose the when i was there you could choose multiple things in that six week block yeah there's but, several subjects you do yeah now. several subjects but you can also go all right um, I want to just focus on one thing and then maybe 20% of the time you spend on the core English, science, maths, and then 80% Which has to be done, yeah. you focus on, on your passions. Which in your case could have been film or business yeah. and then 80% of your time, you're ticking the boxes of English and maths that you've got to do, right? Yeah. Um, and 80% of the time is doing what you feel is the direction and the path that you want to go in in life. Yes. And we're talking you're 14 years old doing that. Yeah, yeah, 14, 15, I think that's when they that's when it start starts, integrating eh? that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. Which is great because 14, 15, for most of us, especially those that have had uh, some really positive, open-minded influences mm. around us, um, you know, and today with the internet, we all have the opportunity to have positive influences. By 14, 15, we're starting to think for ourselves, Yeah. right? Again, not yeah. everyone, but we're starting to say, hey, you know, I'm – don't really enjoy that, but I do enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And the green school, what I love about it is, you mentioned, is the mentors around you. Yeah. Parents are coming in because, yeah. you know, it's a very entrepreneurial-based school. Um, living in Bali is not for everyone. Most, a lot of people are entrepreneurs or they sort of come for a couple of years and mm -hmm. don't work or dad flies in and out, but there's yep. a lot of entrepreneurs. Yep. And this one thing I loved about the green school is parents come in and run a class yeah. for six weeks. Yeah. Or they're there supporting the teacher as a mentor because they have that specific skill set that the students are interested in learning. 100%. My, all of my favorite teachers, just about, I won't say all, but just about all my favorite teachers were parents. So like Suki, yep. National Geographic photographer. He's amazing. Amazing yeah. teacher, amazing mentor. And beautiful guy. Such a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. And But he was in the field as a National Geographic <laughs> yeah. photographer. Yeah. He's not a guy getting paid a salary no. to sit there and you know teach what he learned yeah. from a textbook. Yeah. Like this is the guy who's cutting edge doing yes. it, and he's showing up and he's mentoring and guiding yeah. you. Yeah, and other students. And well, of course, yeah, yeah. he's a teacher there, right? Yeah, yeah. We need that in our life. 
Totally. It, it goes back, I think, in many ways to the, the sort of tribal living where different people, where, you know, someone isn't just raised by their parents and teachers and, and a school system, they're raised by the community. Yeah. And that was, that was probably one of the strongest of parts the of the community. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Even though it changed a lot because people come for a year, it six was transient. Months. But then you get fresh blood and, and new people. And, yeah. You know, you miss out on some people when they go back home or whatever. Mm. But we could have that. And I know there's some green schools. I think there's one being created in New Zealand, or there already has been. Really? Interesting. Um, one in Malaysia was going to go ahead. But regardless if they're called a green school or not, that philosophy of, again, student centered learning, right? You get to choose, especially in high school. And we'll talk mm. about primary school because you weren't there as primary school a little bit at the end of it, maybe. Uh, grade seven, which they called middle school, I think. Oh, middle yeah. school, yeah. So primary school is different, but we'll mm. talk about that. Um, but the whole idea of having that tribe around and those parents being part of the learning and the mentoring experience, we can have that today here on the Gold Coast in Australia or any other city or town around. If you get strong enough community around, you know, I could go in there and teach social media marketing and, and speaking and leadership. Yeah. Why not? T kids want to learn that. And I would love to be part of that experience for people. And there's other parents who can do the same. Mm. Moving away from traditional education and into that, what do you think the impact on society would be? Having experienced it firsthand. I think you get more of a taste of the real world. Mm. Because if you have to meet with mentors and go, okay, hey, I, I, I'm really interested in this. Can you help me? Um, part of that is probably one of the biggest trainings I've ever had has just been going up to someone and saying, hey, can I have some help with learning about this yeah. or sales or marketing, whatever it is. But you get the, the real life situations and the real life education from that as opposed to a textbook. That's, that's the biggest difference, I think, in my mind totally. is that you actually get trained from people who are doing those things. So if, if that yeah. can happen here, I mean, it happens in universities for sure, but there's definitely a benefit to bring it into high school, middle school, potentially. Totally. Yeah. 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 And like you're saying, it's about that relationship that you create with that mentor as well. Mm. For a long time in my life, and, you know, especially when I was moving onto the entrepreneurial path, um, which was when I was about 28, or oh, probably less than that, 26 is when I really committed. 27 is when I really stepped in, I guess. 26, 27. And um, I was so nervous to go and ask my mentor or a mentor for help, even when I was paying for that mentorship, right? Like I had a mentor who moved to Bali and I was nervous to go and ask for help. And I'd be around, and even your dad for a while, if you listen, and <laughs> I was like, your dad, I was just like, and I was younger and whatever and I didn't have any runs on the board myself. I was still trying to figure it out. And here I've seen this, you know, this man who's just got... You know, he's sort of father figure as well. You and I hanging out, even though I was twice your age. It was like, eh. But I just saw him as this successful entrepreneur and someone who was just living this life and making this impact like I wanted to. And I would go and ask, like I'd want to, you know, connect and ask for help. And I would feel nervous because I, I was never taught that. I was never given the opportunity to create those relationships. It was sit down, shut up and listen, tell me the right answer. Good boy, bad boy. You know, this sort of, yeah. I didn't have that real life business and human interaction skills, I was good with people, but not in that way, not with a mentor and someone I want to learn from. Mm. I really felt awkward about it. It was yeah. hard for me to get over, you know, but the more that I grow in my own self, I become more confident in myself and, you know, when you get results and you can look back and go, oh, well, I did good there. Well, okay, maybe they're more equal now. It gets a little easier. But I know that there's a lot of people out there because I see people with me. They come up to me at events mm. and they're really, can I take a photo? I was like, yeah, come on, give, come here, hug, give me a hug first, right? Like I'm a real person like you. But that in itself would just change people's lives because it's no longer the textbook, kids at the back, parents, just teacher at the front, sit down, shut up and listen. It is that real life, this is how life works, this is how we can grow. Mm. Not just if you want to be an entrepreneur, but if you want to be open-minded and think that you know, there's more to life. Yeah, and just and keep learning throughout your whole That's life. That's the key. As opposed to following exactly what you have already learned at 18 yeah. or what your parents told you you should do. Mm. Getting those outside perspectives sometimes can be pretty powerful. Yeah, totally, totally. So green school, yeah. positive? 
there were uh, for sure positives and negatives. Yeah, but um, you're also a teenager at high school. I mean, no matter what, it's definitely teenagers are going to have that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of, would you rather be there or at a high school? And um, I definitely found more value from my time there than any other school I've been to. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So thumbs up for green school. Thumbs up. Yeah. Thumbs up. Like green school. Still got teething. You know, it's still new, but it's figuring yeah. itself out and yeah. it's a whole new paradigm, but I think it's doing really great. Mm. So what are you up to these days? I think two and a half years ago, you left school. All yeah. I see is, and we talk all the time, you're traveling the world, you're doing this, you're doing that. Yeah. What are you up to these days? Uh, so I, I, I went for about eight months just sort of backpacking around, yep. um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I, Best thing ever. I recommend 100%. that to everybody. I highly <laughs> recommend it too. Uh, Burning Man, met amazing people, Incredible. met more mentors. Um, and then focused all my energies into social media marketing. Cool. So that was my first kickoff into entrepreneurship. Why social media marketing? Uh, probably Ty Lopez. Okay. Yeah. He inspired yeah. you? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 I saw what he was doing with SMMA, um, the social media marketing agency program. Cool. Bought the program, went through it, uh, sort of compared that to what I've been learning while at Green School and some of the mentors that have been teaching me and went, okay, let's see what I can do. Yeah. Uh, so I worked with a few different companies. I enjoyed it to a certain amount. And then I realized how much more I love doing partnerships mm. and going more in depth with someone and collaborating with them as opposed to just delivering a service. Yeah. So that's when I started going, okay, what, uh, what can I take from this? what uh, is the most effective stuff that I've already learned or that I've done and how can I apply that in more of a partnership relationship. Cool. Um, and that's when I started focusing on e-commerce because there's just so much potential with companies selling online. Yeah. Um, it's so simple to go, all right, you're doing this much right now. What are the small things we can do? What are the tweaks we can do to bring that up to a bigger level? Um, and yeah, then I focused on, about that, on that for about 18 months uh, mainly with one company, which uh, went really well. Mm -hmm. And then I now have uh, been going more into business leadership teams, figuring out how to simplify companies, essentially, mostly because of my dad, Yeah. mostly because he's been on a journey to simplify his life, to take more free time from a company that has grown way faster than he was expecting. Mm. And I went, okay, one of the things that I was doing with e-commerce partnerships was implementing something called EOS, which is the entrepreneurial operating system. And it's a way of running a company, uh, an entrepreneurial business and making everything more simple and bringing everything back to base principles mm. of how a business works. Mm. And the Crystal Castle, my parents' place went, look, we're starting to implement this. And I went, okay. Do you guys want some help? So that's been my biggest focus over the past four months or so has cool. been just going more and more in depth into that EOS world uh, along with unique ability, strategic coach, yeah. all that stuff. My main focus now is just learning as much as I can. Well, you're 20. You yeah. Know? You traveled 100%. a heap, you backpacked, you're burning yeah. man, you had some fun, you forayed with the digital marketing stuff. Yeah. Your partnership with the Blue Blocker yeah. sunglasses company yeah. went really well until it didn't. Yeah. But, <laughs> yep. you know, you, 100%. Sounds like you were able to grow that company. You were focused on the, yeah. the income producing activities, right? Mm -hmm. Like sales and marketing online is what the yeah. company was. He wasn't a specialist. You were partnered, profit share. Mm -hmm. Gave you a slush fund to travel the world and have fun working from your laptop. Yep. Incredible. How many people want to do that? For sure. And now you're taking it into that that organizational structure, right? Mm. So your dad got into strategic coach. Yes. Tell us a little bit about strategic coach. Yes. My dad found this guy called Dan Sullivan. Did he um, find it or you he, found it? No, he found oh, it really? about 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, He's been cool. reading his books. Wow. Uh, he is probably the the most incredible entrepreneurial minded person I agree in the world I've been like, following him for about five years and he's amazing he's amazing yeah. the way that he he creates thinking tools and breaks down ideas and, and it's just incredible yeah. it's amazing so my dad entered that program um, about I think he, he just started his second year now so he, he did okay. it for all of 2019 cool. and now he's going to do it again for 2020 um, and yeah it's I, I've, I've gone over uh, I visited him in Canada there with uh, while he was in the program because he he has to travel from Australia to Canada four times four a year. times a year yeah. 
which is a long trip. <laughs> it's a long way, Canada. It's a really it's long, a long one. way. Yeah. And, and how many days is the trip? America, it was quite easy to... You were in the to, States. Yeah, I was yeah, in the States, on. so I yeah. could just pop over and hang out and meet the strategic coach crew, yeah. uh, which is amazing group of people. Yeah. yeah really well, incredible. they're all super heart-centered, conscious entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like, they're going for it. We're yeah. talking eight, nine-figure businesses. Yeah. I'm sure there's some more in there as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, Dan's is nine figures. Now you were saying 100 million a year. Uh, I don't have exact numbers on okay, that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, whatever it, it is, it's up yeah, there. Yeah, it's up, it's there. up there. It's up yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. serious entrepreneurs, but yeah. everyone, Joe Polish, that's mm -hmm. how I got connected to Dan. Right. I was following Joe. Yeah. We're even friends on Facebook. Hey, Joe. Love you, man. <laughs> love your work. Love your connections. That's the biggest thing. Joe yeah. Polish is that's the greatest Joe. connector. And he's big with Dan Sullivan. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's helped Dan a lot over the years and vice versa, right? Yeah. But they're, they're heart-centered change makers. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about it. But Dan's stuff in terms of like how to run and structure businesses is just spot on. So you went, you did the, the program there. I didn't. Oh, you know, you weren't allowed in the doors, right? Yeah. You were sitting they in, don't let anyone the that doesn't pay the entry. Yeah. Um, I, I hung so out for a feet. few weeks. Um, uh, just yeah, around with their crew, I yeah. sort of uh, got adopted by the strategic coach family a little bit. Yeah, spent time. Who with could not want to adopt? <laughs> Live with them in their cottage up on the lake and uh, hung out with Dan quite a bit, which was pretty nice. Amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. It's interesting some of the conversations he gets up to after uh, a couple, couple of drinks. glasses of wine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way, right? Yeah, amazing. So, and yeah. so entrepreneurial operating system EOS. Mm. That's something that's come from Strategic Coach. Yeah. Uh, and there's a whole philosophy. My whiteboard is full of it now after yes. you and I did a mastermind session on and you're, you're yeah. mapping out Tribe of Freedom, yeah. um, the whole team and how we're growing and scaling that. Mm. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing for your dad for the Crystal Castle. What, there's 70-something people work yeah. in Crystal Castle. Mm -hmm. So that's a big team. That's big not team. a small team. Really big team. Yeah. Yeah. So and what, what, we have seven, eight people on the leadership team because there's that many departments. It's not just like 40 people in sales. It's like everything's spread across yeah. uh, into yeah, so many different areas yeah, we, because we, there's yeah, so much to do. Retail, cafe, the grounds, the experiences. Mm -hmm. Admin. Admin. Uh, yeah, yeah, grounds maintenance. It's yeah. big. Then yeah. you have the marketing team on top, yeah. on top of that as well. I mean, yeah. how many acres is Crystal Castle? Uh, it's on 108 acres. 108, 108, 108. That's yep. right. They bought it that was, extra parcel, it right? It was 63, and yeah. then they bought another one, which was uh, yeah, 45. Added up to 108. It's yep. perfect. Love Pretty it. perfect. 108. For anyone's like one, <laughs> 108, just Google it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very significant yeah. number. But it's it's the area that's open to pub to the public is about 10 acres. Cool, nice. So groundskeepers and take care of all. So it's a mm -hmm. massive team, 70 people. Mm -hmm. And so what is your focus there in terms of entrepreneurial operating system? Because you know, we've spoken about it. Your dad, he's worked his ass off, right? Like to yeah. do what he does and it's a massive team and da da da. So what's your intention there and sort of what is that framework? What does it look like? Yeah, uh, the way that EOS works is they focus on uh, building up a vision, yeah. which is, okay, what are your 10-year goals, three-year picture, one-year plan, and bringing everything from the highest level of what, where are we all rowing towards and making sure that everything that's being done in the short term is to get to that goal. Yeah. So getting everyone on board basically on the same boat mm. and rowing in the same direction. And they have a lot of different ways of doing that. It could be through the 20 different uh, toolbox tools that they talk about, yeah. um, which are tools for a company to simplify, predict, systemize, whatever it is, whichever part of the company that they're trying to improve, there's a way that EOS has to make that better. Okay. So we're taking sort of a holistic approach of, okay, what what is the company looking like? Uh, going from the accountability chart, making sure that it's really clear, everyone has accountabilities, everyone's accountable to someone, okay. and then going, where are we taking this? Mm -hmm. And how do we go from that big vision down to the 90 day rocks um, or the one week to do's and building up that traction is what they call it, where okay. stuff is just constantly getting done, everything's being improved at a company level. So mm. the way I think about it is strategic coach is amazing for an entrepreneur. Yeah, um, it's, it's a way for an entrepreneur to have a better life yeah. by having more free time and, and figuring out their own mind and freeing up mental energy 
And then EOS is focused on the leadership team. Mm -hmm. So it's how do you build up the strength of the leadership team to step up into those roles of responsibility and keeping people uh, leading, managing, and keeping people accountable. Mm. So that's sort of the way that I think about that Amazing. process. Yeah. The accountability thing, when you say it, is just huge. Mm. Like, even for myself, like, who am I accountable to and how am I measuring that, right? Which is a big thing because yeah. especially, I don't even think 70 people. Like, how do you, it's like having an army, mm -hmm. right? Incredible work, actually, an incredible work. I've got a question though. Yeah. 10 year goals. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah. looking here now and launching Tribe of Freedom. We just started the podcast. We've got mm -hmm. the office here in the Gold Coast in Burley. Um, we're growing the team. We've got Dave on the camera. I love you, bro. Champion. Um, we've got a few other people, Larissa, doing content. We've got some sales people coming in. We're growing, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're digging in and we're growing. And I'm looking now at saying, okay, what is my 10 year vision? And you said it before with your dad. 36 years later, you don't expect you're going to be there, right? But no. even sit, sitting here today and looking back 10 years ago to where I am today, yeah. could I imagine I'd be here? Sort of, yeah. Like, this is mm. the direction I've been going in for a long time. I thought I'd be on stage a little bit more. I didn't realise I'd be so heavy online. Mm. But uh, the, my plan is in the second half of this year to go more on stage again. Um, but you know, I could sort of map this out if I, was, if I was honest. Last 10 years, I sort of could have mapped this out. But for, you know, I, I sort of look into the next 10 years and I've got some ideas of what I want to do and I know that we all do. But how realistic is it that we can actually get there and how malleable do we need to be on the path to change vision or is it that, nah, you set your 10 years, doesn't matter, mate, you just keep going until you get there or is it that we're setting that as like a signpost into the future and yet I'm, you know, staying aware and open to the sensations, the feelings, the experience of now and letting it guide me as well, which then I think, will I get off track because of that? You know, is the signpost enough or does it have to be a rock solid path paved in gold to get there? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, so what, what are you, what are I'm going to cop out on the answer, which is it depends. Oh, come on, mate. <laughs> depends on what? If you have started this company a year ago, about yeah. two years, how uh, long have you been well, really like, focused on the on this main piece? Uh, well, the brand new program and all of this. Well, it's an interesting one because Tribe of Freedom is a mix of the brand new is the online program that mm. teaches and supports leaders to get out into the world, and we focus on the point of sale, right? How do how do you bring in leads and how do you make sales? Yeah. And that's to help leaders develop themselves. But it's also blended with my vision of Tribes United, which I've had for fifteen years and has evolved over the years of we got to bring the leaders together to bring their tribes together to create a critical mass, a community of people that can support one another as this whole Rome crumbles. You know, probably we'll go through that again like we did with Rome. As Rome crumbles around us, we've got people that are supporting one another with food, with um, our own economy. I've got tribe coin, you know, coming out. I've got permacare where we're growing food and supporting each other. We've got the tribal halls or tribal ground where people come together every week to be supported. So there's a bigger vision of community gathering, but my means of getting there is through leaders, coaches, entrepreneurs, marketers, anyone who's gathering a community around them. My focus is to empower them with the tools of sales and marketing, with the ability to influence. I know this industry. I've been in it for 12 years. I know I like it at the back of my hand. Work with some of the top thought leaders in Australasia so I can help those leaders to reach their people. So it's... Yeah, it started a year ago, the brand new program. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've been online forever. Well, not ever, but for several years now and been working towards the Tribes United vision for, yeah, call it 10 years in this direction, but 15 years since I got the vision. Does that answer your so question? So right now, do you have a goal? A goal? Yeah. I've got lots of goals. Do you have a big, hairy, audacious goal? Yes, I do have a B hag. <laughs> nice. I do. What's the yeah. timeline? Is it a 10 year, is it a 15, is it a 30? Well, this is the thing now is I've got several, right? Yeah. You want me to go into them? I'd love to hear the biggest one. The biggest one. All right, the biggest one is to, uh, you, by fi I'm 39 in two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got my 40s mm -hmm. until 50, which is this decade, right? Because it's, it's 2020. So, yeah. you know, I'm looking at this 10 year thing as well. But yeah. regardless of all of that, I've got this feeling my 40s and into, you know, into early 50s, up to 55 max, I'd like to have a holiday first. I want to take a couple of years and sail around the world before I'm 55. But this next 10 years, this next decade is 
developing the community and developing my brand in amongst a community of leaders. So that, that vision is I want to have 100 centres around Australia and New Zealand, uh, mm. potentially in Canada as well, maybe America, but I'm predominantly focused here. But let's be honest, it's Canada and America as well. It'd be great. But the main concentration is Australia and New Zealand where it's sort of modelled off, um, you know, the, the churches. We've spoken about this a million times, but like the Christian churches or the Buddhists or the Hare Krishnas or the, whoever, it doesn't matter, Muslims or it doesn't matter, um, Jews as well, they always come together every week. Right, and they've got that community around them because they have that Sunday or Saturday or whatever day it is. It's holy day, and we come together and we pray and we celebrate and we support each other. But from that, you've got connection. We don't have that anymore. We're very isolated. We're very disconnected. So my vision is to have centres that I call tribal ground, where you show up on tribal ground every Sunday, and we've got speakers and music and connection, and people come to grow together. But we have speakers coming in sharing about natural living or health or consciousness or spirituality or whatever or even like business how to create great businesses and then they spin off into their own you know tuesday night we're doing a weekend or we're doing a, an evening thing and that would sell into a weekend then also from the sunday you've got the men's circles the women's circles the parents gatherings i've got this thing about co-schooling rather than homeschooling let's all come together and support our kids to grow daycare for the people that are choosing uh, to potentially not vaccinate or not be part of that uh, control mechanism, which I'm open about. I'll have a conversation about it anyone wants to. I just want choice, right? I want people to be able to choose. And there's enough evidence to suggest that it's not a bad choice to make, right? And you can look at it to yourself. But I want to be able to support community to come together in an empowered way to grow together, right? Six-foot fence syndrome, everyone's disconnected, you know, you don't know your neighbour, stranger danger, the terrorism, bullshit, and the media is just constant fear. Our government's a bunch of wankers, let's be honest, a bunch of wankers, and that's the bigger vision I'll share with you. But I just want to get people back grassroots. I want to have local community coming together. Imagine about a couple of hundred people coming together in your local neighbourhood. And then we're doing rites of passage for teenagers, like we need to. We've got men coming together to support each other, families coming together to support each other, co-schooling happening. Um, permacare is where we're going to grow our own food in our backyards and have a distribution model of organic homegrown food, once again, like we used to in traditional cultures. Right? And they still have it in Europe. You go to some local villages in Russia or um, even Eastern Europe where I've travelled with my wife, you get food everywhere. The grandmothers are going growing food. We need to get that again. Coles and Woolies or these big multinationals controlling our food supply is scary. So my vision over the next 10 years, I want to have 100 centres across Australia. I want to have our own currency connected. I want to have our own food supply. Um, and being in the middle of that, I want to have an educational uh, like institution, but it's an online thing as well as local, where we're supporting these leaders to get out there. Leaders like you know speakers and teachers and trainers getting out there. And a big part of what we're doing with Tribe of Freedom, now the focus is to get those leaders out there and start to build their tribes. They're connected to the Tribe of Freedom and we can speak with one voice that, hey, you're not alone anymore. Come and let's grow this thing together. So that's the next 10 years. Mm. That's what I'm creating. Then I want to go and travel around the world for a couple of years on a yacht. would be nice. amazing. That's my goal. Um, 50, 60 foot cat. would be amazing with the family. And then around 55... I want to run for office. I want to take the top seat. I want to become the Prime Minister of Australia. And I want to take that network of, of community around Australia and I'll grow my brand and you know be the tip of the spear, get more leaders out there, speak this vision of freedom. And then I want to walk in the front door of Canberra and say, things are about to change, guys. People have voted. I'll stand up if I need to. Let's go. I'll stand up. You vote for me. We'll create a party or whatever. join another party, whatever we've got to do. It's a few years away now, right? But by 55, I want to run for office and I want to be prime minister and I want to change the way that Australia's been run. I want to get people back to prosperity, back to abundance, not fear and scarcity. I want to talk about what's going on with the banking system, what's going on with the educational system, what's going on with the media, what's going on with the pharmaceutical companies. I want to talk about that and I want to open up a real conversation about how we can make this world a better place for all of us. And so, yeah, that's what I reckon. That's my big, hairy, audacious goal. Top seat in Australia, let's go. Have you got a bigger one? I'll take it too. But yeah, that's Australia based, but I also want to be traveling and, and speaking this vision around the world. And there's enough people want it. Let's just stand up and make it happen. Mm.
So, yeah, it's sort of clear. Like, I know where I want to go. I've got mm. that sort of straight line vision. But, again, people setting, how much is this going to meander? I don't think that's going to be necessarily a straight line. Maybe. Maybe. That's the thing. Could it be? And I've got a crystal ball and I'm not just visioning it, but I'm actually like, oh, that's real. That's going to happen. Am I speaking it into existence? Am I creating it with my intention and my tenacity to, to well, have it? What are, you, what are you creating if you're not focused on that? That's my question. If, if you have a company or if you have a group of people and they aren't all on board with what the vision that you have is, yeah. what, what are they on board with? Where are they going? If you aren't all rowing in the same direction, yeah. are you rowing against each other? Are you rowing left and right? Yeah, well, that's right. That's the question. How many companies out there are like that right now, yeah? Because yep. that vision is, is not clear. And in EOS, you talk about the top person, the CEO, the founder, whatever, is the visionary. Yes. And that's what you're talking about here is that visionary, in this case it's me, is holding that vision and making sure everyone is going towards that vision. And if they're going off vision, you got to pull them into line and say, hang on a second, are we going in the same direction? Because if we're not... Not necessarily. No? All right. Um, I'd Guide say... Me, guru, please. <laughs> You're the red of the books, man. Let's go. Teach me. I'd say the visionary participates in the vision. Okay. Many of the time... Many times uh, the vision is co-created. Yeah. That's what I love beautiful. about EOS is that the way they start, it's always two full days of vision building okay. as a team. So it's, cool. you know, everyone... So every head of department comes together yeah. with the visionary, with what they call the integrator, who's the one who's running sort of the day-to-day... Uh, in the weeds, dealing with all the little fires. Yeah, like the COO in traditional Pretty chief much. operating officer. Also CEO sometimes. Okay. Sometimes they're called the CEO. Cool. Sometimes the visionary is the uh, is not even involved in, in a lot of the executive stuff, yeah. even though they're still guiding the ship. They could be like chairman of the board or something. Yeah, yeah, in some ways, yeah. Uh, and then they spend two full days co-creating that vision cool. and making it and figuring out how to make it a reality through that sort of process Hence bringing the, implement, the vision into the traction yeah. yeah the yeah. integrator is oh, the one who yeah <laughs> so the integrator is the one who keeps everyone on track okay so that's why yeah I'd say the visionary many times informs the vision or yeah. helps co-create and might have a big piece of co-creating that vision yeah but the integrator is the one that actually holds everyone accountable to yeah. do that because to hit the milestones yeah. and get it done I don't know if you enjoy holding people accountable and Not managing really. people I'm more like inspiring people yep. and getting people excited <laughs> about where we're going and checking in and be like man you're awesome and yeah but having someone there the yep. integrator to do that that's what you've spoken about that's what I need right I need that person potentially yeah, yeah. I love that you're talking about the visions co-created mm. that's something I've always said with the Tribes United is Tribes United is a concept right there's mm. enough good people we just got to come together everyone's got their own tribe you know, if you, if you needed to, right, if we're going to throw a party, you could bring 10 friends. You know, you could make a call, send some messages, and you could bring 10 people. Nine of them I don't know. There yeah. might be one overlap, right, one yeah. or two overlaps. Yeah. You know, I could do the same, Dave could do the same, you could do the same, we could all do the same. If we bring all of those people together, we got a party, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, it's based on the circle model because today it's very top-down. It's a pyramid, right? The CEOs are the top, the workers are at the bottom, CEO makes eight to 800 times more than them, and the vision is top down, not what you're talking about EOS, but in traditional business. Whereas I more think of the like the tribal way of being, where they sit circle, and we do this in the men's work that I do. We always sit circle around a fire, the central hearth, the heart, and everyone has a voice. That's what I like about uh, this this concept of Tribes United is I don't have all the answers. I got a vision, and it's a big vision, and I'm courageous, and I'll go after it, but I don't know how to do it all. <laughs> And I want to sit down with other people who do and say, hey, well, this is what I see. What do you reckon? Mm -hmm. Right? And that's powerful. And it sounds like EOS is a proponent of that and, and guiding companies now to do that, yeah? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Especially at that leadership team level. Yeah. It's about bringing them together and building them up as a strong, powerful group. Yeah. So at what size does that EOS start to work? If I've got five people in my team... Can I'd I say if you have a leadership team. I mean, you can yeah. take a lot of the uh, the ideas or the philosophy behind it and build out uh, their sort of vision traction organizer, which is what I was talking about, making that five-year vision, getting clear on your core values, yeah, getting clear that. on all these different sort of things. Yeah. Um, but if you have only one person in the leadership team, it's going to be yeah. a little difficult. Yeah, okay. So but what you if can still like, use it. What if you've got three or four people in your team, so mm. where I'm at right now? <laughs> yeah. Four of us. Well, yeah. th three full and then one sort of coming in and out. Um, 
are they all sort of like in leadership positions and we can come together? Or it depends if they on are. the energy of the relationship, yeah? Yeah, it depends on what they're accountable for. Yeah. What function, uh, what seat they're sitting in. Yeah, if they're just performing a task, yeah. then it's different to them actually having direction. Yeah. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Usually the leadership team is created because they're leading the team. So the rest of the team. Or they could be they could be alone, but they could be leading a certain part of the organization. Yeah. But they could be solo. Yeah. Yeah. That is with a team to come as it yes. grows, sort of thing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you had one person just responsible for the marketing function, yeah. they would be in the leadership team. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it's fascinating, right? And we had um, Gabby on the show a little while ago. I don't know if I've told you about Gabby Button. She's amazing. So oh. you'll love her. She was in corporate for fifteen years. She did really, really well. And then uh, last 15 years, she's been, um, and I don't know if those numbers are right, it could be 10 years, it could be 20, whatever. The last 15 years, she's been a corporate facilitator in leadership and management. Hmm. And her whole thing is, uh, it's a very toxic environment in corporate and business right now, and people are losing their identity, which is causing a lot of disconnection and pain, and there is a better way, right? And she's all about helping people with their vision of the life that they want to create and who they are, are and then integrating that with solid business practices and principles. It's not about, you know, making everything a not-for-profit just so that you feel good. It's yeah. like, okay, business can be business, but let's be empowered to be ourselves at the same time. And she's amazing at, you know, this conversation about we can change business and business is changing the world. Business is the yeah. world. What's your thought on that, about entrepreneurship, business, and this direction where we're going? 100% agree. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah same. Yeah. I mean, I think entrepreneurs are the ones who are creating the most value in the world right now. Yeah. I think it's pretty hard to say that someone like Elon Musk isn't creating a huge amount of value for the world. Totally. In yeah. SpaceX and in Tesla. Look what he did with Tesla. I mean, yeah. all these other major car companies now have to make electric cars. Yeah. And they could have been doing it. The technology was there. But, yeah. oh, the market wasn't there. It's a lot of work. We're still selling plenty of these, pumping few gas out the back end, right, digging up oil. And he's like, no, 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 no. And now they've got to catch up. So yeah. definitely entrepreneurs. I definitely might be wrong. Um, but I, believe, I definitely, I might, definitely be might be wrong. <laughs> uh, fact check this. But I believe uh, it just got valued over f uh, or – no, sorry, never mind. I'm not going to say that because that sounds uh, – I, I got to check the facts first. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you'd tell me if we were just having a conversation, but you're worried about being recorded, <laughs> being caught out. Uh, yes, on. yeah, yeah I'm mate. diving the deep end, but just say, look, I'm not sure, but I, I fact check this. But uh, it's believe... a podcast, man. It's not a news show. <laughs> <laughs> I believe their stock price is above Ford right now. Above Ford, I'm not 100 percent sure. Ford. I read a headline. The original makers of cars. I definitely could be wrong. Yeah, you definitely could be wrong. So but don't take my word for this, okay? <laughs> but regardless, even if they're regardless. up there competing with Ford yeah. right now, how it's long has Tesla been forward. around? Oof. When did they bring out the Roadster? 2013, 14? I love that you even know that. 2013, 14. So seven oh. years and Ford's been around 100 and whatever. I wonder when they started a long time ago. Quick, somebody tell me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Whenever they started, right? Amazing in the blink of an eye. And that guy's got a good personal brand. He's yeah. a good market. You sure does. Re the release of the, um, he did it with it and smashed the windows, the yeah. um, SUV. Yep. That was cool, man. The Cybertruck. Yeah, the Cybertruck. Yep. I want one. That they was good. accidentally brilliant marketing. Accidentally brilliant? Yep. Yeah. They sold, I think, 150,000 in the first 48 hours. That's incredible. Yeah, you just had to put a deposit down and then it takes bucks. two years. 100 yep. bucks. It's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And all of those people will buy them at the end. I mean, the price was right too. Yeah. I want to buy one. That's my so next cheap. car is a Tesla. Yeah. I still want to get a Tesla. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Let's get to work, man. We got Let's do it. We got some people to help. <laughs> so we can get Teslas. Yes. Yeah, totally. All right, man. So business, massive passion. Mm. Traveling, obviously massive passion. You and I, same like that. We're going yeah. to be traveling forever. Yeah. What I love most about you and why we've always got on is you're free. Right? You have a mindset of freedom. Most mm. people are living in some sort of fear or scarcity that they won't be able to do something or that m money or resources are tied or whatever, whatever. But you and I, for some reason, we both just developed this idea that I can do anything I want to do. <laughs> and we're doing it, right? Yeah. And so do you agree with what I'm saying? Yes, you for sure. You just have freedom in your mind like this is a playground. Yeah. 
what gave you that and how does it affect you in your life and how do other people I don't get know. I think I think in it? that there are benefits and negatives as well okay because you lose some stability yes yeah, stability I don't have any yeah. of not and that's why I try to rent that's an office that's been 100% that's been one of my yeah biggest things that I'm trying to work on is because there's yeah. so much freedom last year I did 20 countries 20 I think. Dude, that's a good year, man. It was a good year. I'm not done 20 in one year before. That's, that's a big one. Impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big one. It's long. Uh, yeah, lots of traveling. I, I yeah. left Australia. I didn't. I left in January and came back in December. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a life most people would dream of, mate. Yeah. And, and I, I dreamed of it. Negatives. Yeah. It's, and you I dreamed it. of it. I, I lived it for that year. And this year, I'm like, man, I don't want to take that many flights. Yeah. And no. just move around that much. Yeah. A lot and of airports. Make amazing connections with people and then just have to leave jump on a plane yeah so there are there are benefits to that freedom but i think because we've lived it there's a value to being able to choose that's the key to have that choice yeah to do what and you lots do. of people can do that like lots of people are doing that they yeah, totally might do a year off you know that's yeah. that's a big thing in australian culture i've yeah. been doing gap year. three year gap year but mm. <laughs> three year gap year while Focused on business, um, but I don't think you're going to get a university, are you? Definitely not. No way. Not at you not, and I see no, university I, the same. as like what a waste yeah. of time. <laughs> yeah. Why would I, if I wanted to be a doctor specifically, and that was For my sure. calling, mate, I'd go to university yeah. and I'd get that bit of paper, or a lawyer, or you know something that you need that yeah. bit of paper. But doing it because that's what you're told to do, it's or an industry. Or doing it because you don't know what to do. Yeah, totally. I think is a bit of a and that's sort of difficulty. what parents and society is pushing you into. Mm. But they're for-profit companies, mate. Those universities, they're Most churning they marketing yep. and pushing people into getting those degrees. Mm -hmm. Massive student loans. I mean, at least we're not in America. Yeah. Could be worse. And yeah. I mean, in America, it's so. covered by the government. Well, it's it's uh, those those loans are protected by the government. So yeah. if you die, parents can get the loan. Oh, is it? That works. Far out. Here, at least, even at least so. for some. Here, you still got to pay it off. Yeah. You pay it out. Of, I paid mine off the year before last. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, it's, it's an lot. industry. It's a lot. It's, it's a big industry. Yeah, it's a big Very industry. Very expensive. It, and it, I think there's a lot of bullshit in it too. It's just, yeah. you know, what do you do? Go to university and get a $60,000 loan, you know, or debt. And, and a lot of people are struggling to find a job or a stable job afterwards. That's, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Totally. So many of my friends who've come out of university are just like, what am I meant to do now? Yeah. I got this thing, this bit of paper and, yeah. you know. I, I have what, a liberal arts degree. Where do I go? Yeah, it's, right. Liberal arts. <laughs> But it, oh, there was some statistic, and like you, fact check me, please. It was like 30% of people get a job in the degree that they studied. Mm -hmm. Something stupid like that, right? Yeah. It's like if you study science, they become a scientist, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It's like, it, and it might be less than 30%, it might be more, I don't know. But even so, why go and spend four years of your life getting a bit of paper that you're probably never going to benefit you anyway? Mm. I mean, I don't have a degree and I'm grateful for it. I had a year and a half and I was like, this is not taking me where I want to go. And I was lucky to make that decision to step out and find a better way. But so, yeah, most people are stuck in it. But you're never going to uni. Well, what I've seen right now is that more like as time has progressed, 2010, 2020, the amount of job flexibility and people switching careers has increased. Yeah. That was totally. one thing that I saw is that now people might switch careers three, four times throughout their life. So if you have one degree, how much relevance is that after you've switched three times? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like it might be. Or maybe it's what you've already done is more relevant. What have you actually done for the world? What have you done for companies, people? What, what kind of relationships have you built? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I, and I think these, that has more value. I agree with you. These core things just aren't being taught. And like the whole yeah. like, uh, thing around um, financial education. I was listening to um, Robert Kiyosaki stuff, Rich Dad, yeah. Poor Dad. That was yeah. the first personal development book I ever read. Really? It's massive, right? And it's, it still is. Great book. Great book. And um, yeah, I was listening to him on a podcast the other day. Yeah. And he, his whole thing is, we all use money. Why aren't we being taught financial education at school? Mm. And it's like, it's so true. We all have relationships with people where we need to influence people. Right, like if I want to get a job, I need to influence that person to buy me, uh, to buy me, to hire me. Yeah. If I'm going to sell something, which yeah. is business, if I'm selling mugs, I still got to bloody sell them. Mm. Why aren't we being taught in taught, taught in school influence and mm. sales and human relationships, uh, emotional intelligence, you know, things where you can show up and actually use those skill sets? 
but we'd been taught, you know, how to add up on a bit of paper and maths numbers when I got Siri to go, hey, Siri, 14 <laughs> times 13, right? Like, <laughs> it's so archaic. Why We're not being taught the things that actually matter at school, let alone university. Mm. And again, I'm not saying that all people don't go to university. If you For need sure. that bit of paper, 100%. go and get your bit of paper. 100%. But also with online education today. It's big. It's massive. It's big. I mean, this podcast is sponsored by Skillshare. No, I'm joking. Yeah, right. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Skillshare and all of these other yeah. ones out there. But even they're huge. Oh, they're huge, mate. Yeah. But even like um, you know, people that I support, these trainers, these coaches, these mentors, and even me. Like mm. I sell a, a program on uh, marketing and sales with a personal brand. I don't have a piece of paper that says I'm licensed to teach marketing, and I don't need it, no. and I don't want it. Because anything that I would learn in marketing from a lecturer who's on a salary is not going to be able to be applied in today's fast-moving business environment, social media environment, right? Yep. Why people come to me is they see I've got the runs on the board. You know, mm -hmm. I've had a highly successful network marketing business mm -hmm. using social media, highly successful coaching business. I've sold millions of dollars of retreats and programs for some of the top thought leaders. I've been in the trenches doing this, mm -hmm. right? And I got the stripes. I earned the, you know, I earned the right to go and teach it. That's why people go, hey, you know what you're doing. You're doing it right now. Teach me how to do it. Cool. I've got an online program. I've got mentoring. I support people. And that's just one example. How many people out there are doing that right now? You want to go and get it's another job, go and learn from someone who's already doing the job mm -hmm. and go and get that skill set straight away. Eight-week course, 12-week course, mm -hmm. whatever. Not four years at university. Show up, say, hey, I know Facebook ads. I know this and that. I've got a counseling degree. I've got whatever. Mm -hmm. Did it online, ready to rock and roll. World's changed. Yeah. World's changed. It sure is. And it's, it's more and more. That's just the amount of education online is just increasing it at an to. exponential rate. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. One of the most exciting industries that I see as an educator mm. and as someone who's passionate about changing the world through inspired education, right? Like the more people that we get out there sharing their voices, in my opinion, the better. Mm. Different points of view, different ideas. That's why podcasts and, you know, conversations like this are so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It does make fun. the world a better place. In my opinion. Well, let's wrap this one up because you and I want to have another conversation. And next time, I want to dive into all your health yeah. wisdom, right? Sure. You got some, <laughs> some stuff going. So you, you were, uh, you know, when you were in Bali, you had some issues with your health. Yeah. When you were young, 13 or something, that started. When I was 13, I got typhoid, amoebic dysentery, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, adrenal fatigue, diagnosed. Uh, and stomach That's aches dirty. and cramps and nausea and headaches every day for about two years. That was crazy. Yeah, it was a little intense. <laughs> yeah, and from that, that pushed you deep into understanding what the hell is going on, yeah. how do I get my health back? And I remember being at those bonfires at my beach house, <laughs> everyone sitting around Toby and you just like... <laughs> <laughs> that lights and mitochondria and this and that and when you do this and you're like dude how old are you 16 how do you know all this well i've done a little bit of research had to yeah had to. doctors yeah. didn't help me that's for sure no well they didn't know what to do right mm -mm. everyone i went to uh every single doctor gave me a different diagnosis yeah about counted about 12 15 doctors Every single one had a different because they were all looking through a different lens. Yeah, totally. And took many, many pills. None of it worked. Didn't do it. Nope. So at that point, you realize I've got to take the power into my own hands and I've got yeah. to figure this out. Yeah. 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 I went to online education. I found neurosurgeons and people doing cutting edge research. A lot of stuff coming out of Europe. Cool. Russia. Yeah. A lot really. of research papers that came out of Russia based cool. on how the human body works, which is, you know, quite controversial. But they've always been cutting edge, eh? The Russians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they do some they have some too. interesting stuff. Germans yeah. are onto it. A hundred percent. Yeah, and just like the marketing and e-commerce and business stuff that I've been doing, it all goes back to okay, what's the base principles? Yeah. What's the at the 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 furthest the the, the most small? Let's just get into how do we make it all simple? Yeah. And understand what's actually going on, as opposed to ah, there's bacteria in you. Let's fix it. Take these antibiotics. More antibiotics and yeah. then more bacteria and then more antibiotics. <laughs> Crazy. Eh? Yeah. So you just said, no, nah, I've got to figure this out. Yeah. Online education. And you were doing ice baths, mm -hmm. a lot of ice baths, right? That was a big one. That was a big one. That helped you a lot? Huge amount. Cool. Yeah. Still doing them? Uh, no. 
No, I haven't need to. I haven't needed to. No, okay, I've, cool. I've been, I've been good. Yeah, cool. I haven't had any of the health issues come back. So you sort of about all two out, years. Eh? Yeah, you're a champion, and you messed with your diet like crazy. Yeah, you tried every diet under. Every time I see you, mate, I'm like, so what are you eating now? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm only eating. What are you eating right now? Only right now, meat. carnivore. Carnivore, completely. Yep. And you were once vegan, vegetarian. I went, yep. Yep, went through that. No, no, didn't last very long. <laughs> didn't last long. Okay, no <laughs> lectins. Yeah, I went off lectins. That was a big one. Did bulletproof. Bulletproof. You got bulletproof me on diet coffee. and yep. bulletproof coffee. Yeah, experimented with all that. Still drinking coffee? I still drink coffee. Okay, yeah, not bulletproof coffee though. Not bulletproof. Not, anymore. not with the butter. Yeah, you were all about that for a long time. I was. I was quite into that. That helped me where I was. Yep. Right now, it doesn't help as much. And the carnivore right now is only meat, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, just meat. No grains. No, no. veggies. Just meat. No yeah. fruit. No. no water. A little bit of hot sauce. <laughs> Are you drinking your water? Salt. Yeah. A bit of hot sauce and salt. Water. But we're talking chicken, beef, kangaroo, snake, fish. fish. <laughs> haven't had any snake. <laughs> snake. Haven't snake. Haven't done any snake. Yeah. Kangaroo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love kangaroo yeah. meat. It's so good. The Americans and Canadians right now are like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Kangaroo meat. Yeah, we eat yeah, kangaroos we here. Do. We do. They're good. Good for the Have environment too. Kangaroo skewers on the barbie. Lovely. Oh. Kangaroo mince bolognese Ooh. minus the pasta and tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just meat. Yeah. Why? What the hell are you just eating meat for? Isn't uh, that like counter to everything that everyone's saying these 100%. days? hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that was because- I love your else. freedom in that too. Like- <laughs> Everyone's saying be vegan and vegetarian, eat, eat lots of greens, and you're like, I just eat meat. Yeah. Like, why? Well, my approach is I'm not going to judge it till I try it. True. So I'm not yeah. judging vegans. I've tried a bit. I haven't. I didn't last very long, so I'm not going to judge them too much. It's better not to judge um, anyone. Really. 100. Yeah. Do your 100%. thing. I'm do my your thing. thing. Live and let live. Yeah. Um, for me, I tried going carnivore because last year, uh, due to the amount of travel. Uh, about, yeah, a bit over a year ago, I put on a huge amount of weight okay. because I'd, I'd gone through all my health stuff when I was younger. Um, I'd sort of fixed myself on that, but I was still a bit overweight. And then I was just traveling constantly. I was living in LA, yeah. not eating. Well, I was eating all right. I was eating Bulletproof. I was drinking Bulletproof coffee every morning at the Bulletproof Cafe in Santa Monica. And then I just, boom, a few months went by and I was like, holy shit, I'm 93 kilos which I was Whoa. just, I'd never been before. What are you now? Got on the scale. I'm 71. So 20, 20 kilos. 20 yeah, 22. Kilos. So you lost 22 kilos. I lost 22 there, kilos so. in four months. Four months, 22 four months, kilos. 22 kilos. By doing what? Well, I started carnivore. Okay. Um, and I actually put on a bit extra weight. So I yeah. went from like 91 to 93 in about two months. Okay. did carnivore. Then I went, I stayed with the carnivore, but I just changed my meal timing. So oh, okay. when I was in LA, I was working out every day. I was hanging out at Equinox. Heavy weights or cardio? Uh, or cardio, a yeah. bit of weights, doing whatever I could. Yeah. Wake up, jump on a bike, doing all this stuff, just kept putting on weight. Then the thing is, <laughs> I went back to the same neurosurgeon that I figured out the ice baths and the sun and the stuff that really healed me yeah, when I was 14, 15. Okay. And I went, all right, what, what's he, he going to say about being overweight? He had this thing called the leptin prescription, and that's what I followed, which isn't about what you eat. It's about how you eat it. So it's about meal timing. Did you so say lectin prescription? Leptin. Oh, leptin. Yeah. Is his name leptin? No, no. no. Uh, leptin is a hormone oh, okay. that controls uh, CCK and ghrelin, which are your two hunger hormones. Oh, so leptin is actually a hormone produced by your fat okay. that tells your brain how much fat and energy your body has to burn. Oh, wow. So the reason why I was working out constantly and putting on more weight was, uh, according to this guy, and from what I've tested, seems to be true, 20 come years 22 later. kilos later, um, the reason why I kept putting on weight was because uh, my brain was desensitized to leptin. Okay. Now... Didn't know when you were hungry or what to burn. 100%. Uh -huh. It just thought that I needed more fuel because it couldn't get the message that I already had fat on my body. And it didn't know that it could use that, so yep. you're just putting it in your mouth instead of it going and burning the yep. stuff that's hanging off your waist. 100%. Fascinating. Yeah. Just controlled by one hormone. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So leptin did the reset, which is basically I woke up, within half an hour of rising, I'd eaten a big breakfast. And we're talking a chunk of salmon or something, I think. Or like three chunks of salmon. Three <laughs> yeah. chunks of salmon. Dude. Yeah. Within half tons an hour of fat, waking Tons up. of protein, protein within yep. a half an hour of waking up. Boom. Okay. And then I ate one or another meal or two other meals throughout the day. Didn't snack at all. 
I quit coffee and alcohol for six weeks. Yeah. Um, for the first six weeks that I did it, and I didn't eat for four hours before I went to bed. Four hours. Four and hours. What time's bedtime? Nine. Yeah. Nine, ten. Eleven, probably. So I didn't eat, but after like five. So five, okay. Yeah. So you're done five. by five. Yeah. So you'd have a big breakfast as soon as you wake up, and mm-hmm. you have a big lunch, then you have a big afternoon, like four o'clock, five o'clock. Yeah. And then yeah. done until then done. that until I woke up again. Yeah. Okay, cool. And are they all meat? Uh, yes. Yeah, so when I was doing this, I, I stayed with the all meat. Okay. Even though the all meat didn't really help me for the first two months that I did it. Yeah. I still stuck with it because I had a feeling it might help. Okay. To doing this. And you had a program. feeling, and you also had researched this carnivore yeah. diet yeah. based on your needs for your body type and all of that. Yeah. yeah? It's not yeah. going to be for everyone. Uh, I don't know. Really? We'll see. Huh. All right. We'll see. So there we go. There, there needs to be more research on it for sure. Yeah. I can't say yes. Again, or no. it's counter to what everyone else is saying. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder but, how your colon is. Isn't that the whole thing? Meat gets stuck in the walls of the colon. Yeah, that's uh, there's a lot of stuff around that. That's a little bit of a, I would say, slightly dodgy research. Interesting. Yeah. So you're saying there's counter research to pretty much everything, but <laughs> pretty much counter research at least to this vegan, vegetarian, greens, yep. whole foods, and all of that, mm-hmm. um, and that maybe we could just get by like cavemen. Make a kill yeah. and eat that there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. That's an idea. Yeah, it's an it's, idea. It's potential. And we're just making this up as we go along. For sure. In life. I think. Uh, I think your best test subject is yourself. Totally. Yeah. That's my. But opinion. having a sensitivity to it as well. Yeah. Right? A lot of people aren't sensitive to their bodies. Living in our heads, mm. disconnected from our bodies a lot. Mm. What do you think about that? I mean, the biggest uh, factor, at least for this experiment, was like. Am I going to lose weight or not? Yeah, and how? Yeah, on. and how do I feel? How's did you my have energy? a lot more energy? Huge amount. So you did food. The, so yeah. So I did six, six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. Reset. I lost five kilos in those okay, six weeks. Six weeks. Five kilos. Yeah. Two months before, nothing. Same diet. Two months before, same diet. Didn't change the food. I 100% stopped exercising. And you lost five kilos. Lost five kilos. Two months before and you put I, on three. I ate more. You ate more. Stopped exercising. Yep. But because of the timing of it, mm-hmm. so now this waking up and eating within half an hour, mm. that's resetting that leptin hormone or yes. the sensitivity to that hormone. Yep. Okay. That, is something it, uh, that is something that helps your brain get uh, reset its circadian rhythm. So that's your 24-hour cycle. Yep. All of our genes have 24-hour uh, clocks. Our basically. genes? Yeah. Okay. Basically in front of them. So the way that... Um, our, our brain measures time is through the SCN, which is the super chiasmatic nu- nucleus. I've got one. Basically, <laughs> don't need to know any of that. It helps but your I love brain. That you know about it. That's good. <laughs> it helps your brain uh, understand what time of the day it is. It helps your brain understand uh, what it should be doing. Because if your brain's sending a signal to run a daytime program when it's nighttime, yeah, like what we do when we eat, you know, chips at midnight mm-hmm. you're telling your brain hey it's daytime we've got uh, energy because, now let's yeah. burn it yeah so it's it's uh it's getting your body back into that 24-hour cycle okay. basically is one of the theories behind that and so what is it a thing in your in your middle of yes your brain or so your eyes uh can pick up light yep and it can tell the amount of blue light that you're getting blue light triggers um your scn which essentially controls your day night cycles in okay. your brain. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm make you. this as, yeah. yeah. Um, but we can also control those cycles using food. Gotcha. But you're also about blocking out blue light after yeah. dark. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of the things that I've been doing for a few years. And that's what your company that didn't was. have. Yeah. That didn't have any effect on my weight though. Okay. Yeah. But does that have an effect on your circadian rhythms? Yes, for okay. sure. So yeah, do yeah. you still wear blue blockers after dark? At night, yeah. And you've got red lights throughout your house. Yeah. I know. Yeah. In there, yeah. Yeah. And the one in Bali, red lights, 100%. no blue light. No blue light at night. At night, okay. Yeah. And that's part of the circadian rhythm thing. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. And no eating after dark because you're finishing it by five, right? Yeah. Well, that was yeah. that was part of the leptin prescription. Yeah. But then talking about light, I, I flew to Bali um, at the end of those six weeks. Yep. I was in Bali for two weeks. And I did the exact same kind of diet. Yeah. I, I ate the same stuff, mostly salmon, bit of chicken. But while I was there, I started watching the sunrise. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. And that also, because when the sun rises, it goes from an uh, orange-red light to uh, more blue. Because uh, as the yeah, sun yeah. goes up, more blue can uh, go through the atmosphere. Yeah. So 
when I started watching The Sunrise, it took two weeks, I lost the same amount of weight as those first six weeks. Interesting. So I'd lost five kilos gone. 10 yeah. kilos in the first two months, Yeah. then another 10 in the other you two months. You just get fallen off you yeah. after that. 100%. And how long were you doing the sun gazing in the mornings? Uh, five, 10 minutes, oh, just at sunrise. At sunrise, yeah. yeah. So it's only five, 10 minutes. And that's a really mm-hmm. powerful technique. Yeah, um, for I sure. learned that years ago. Yeah. I'd like to get up early enough to do that these days. Yeah. That'd be good. As winter comes closer, it's easier to do. Mm. You just got to get your ass out of bed. But yeah, sun gazing is amazing. Um, and it's five, 10 minutes. It's only when before, when it sort of gets a fist distance up, yeah. then it, you can feel it's too bright mm-hmm. and then you stop looking at it. Yeah. Or stop staring into it. Um, but you did that for two weeks only in Bali or you, yeah. Get, and then you left Bali. Oh, didn't you? I left Bali. I went back to Australia and I kept doing it. Okay. But while I was there, that was like, it was just so surprising to me how much, how much more weight. Well, five I kilos. In that in, amount of time. Yeah. yeah. In two weeks. Two weeks. So the sun gazing helped with the circadian rhythm as well yeah. as eating straight in the morning. Mm-hmm. And now what are you doing after you've done that reset? Are you still within half an hour eating a big meal and then the four hours before sleep? Yeah, so after I did the reset, um, the interesting thing was my hunger just completely changed. Okay. So Because that hormone t- yeah. and receptivity to that's changing. Yeah, right? so now um, I can eat a meal a day. That's what I've been doing for a while. A meal a day, yeah. one meal a day. One meal a day. And when, when do you eat that? So it could be as soon as I wake up. That's, okay. that's, I feel the best when I do that. If I wake up, eat straight away, Yeah. big bunch, and then just... You know, work throughout the day. No snacks. Do no whatever. Nothing. 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 Just food. No, okay. uh, just water and because a lot bit of, of people now are into the um, intermittent fasting, where yeah. they don't eat until lunchtime, and then yeah. have lunch, have dinner, just eat within that eight-hour window, mm-hmm. and then sixteen hours they're not eating. But you're saying eat immediately when you wake up, so that it triggers your body. Hey, yeah. game on. We're up. We're active. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And then. You got a different body type to me though, right? For sure. Like you're a couple yeah. we were talking about before. You're mm-hmm. like a, a bigger build. Mate, 90 kilos on me is impossible. <laughs> and I'm taller yeah. than you, right? It's just yeah. not going to happen. My body type's very, very different. Mm-hmm. But there's no reason I couldn't get away with doing the meat in the morning within half an hour or the big salmon or whatever it For is. For sure. Yeah. And then, you know, four hours. I think the four hours before dinner, before sleep's a great idea regardless of what you're eating. Mm-hmm. Allow your body to be digest, like to digest that food so you can go into rest and heal mode. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm finishing dinner two hours, sometimes an hour and a half before I'm going to sleep. Yeah. It's got to still be digesting. For sure. It's not good. I like you. You're just like, I'm not going to tell you what's right or wrong. I For love sure. that. That's not my man. job. No, that's not your job. <laughs> and one, I, lo- I love also you're always like, you self-reflect on everything I say, mm. which I love because I'm like, oh, he's going to challenge me on this. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love being challenged on my ideas. Hey, I got this idea. And you're like, well, you know what? Here's another perspective. Yeah. Not enough people do that, eh? Not enough people maybe are like, Maybe I'm well, just a contrarian. I well, don't know. Maybe you are. But it's, I like that about you. Thanks. I like that about you. Thank yeah, you. it's good. So you're not going to tell me what to do, but... You could try I it. still like the idea of finishing goes. before sleep a lot earlier. Yeah. But that's got to help the body to mm-hmm. heal. Because that's what bedtime is. It's healing yeah. time. You're resting. You're rejuvenating. And if you've got a gut full of food that's got to be digested... Mm. At the same time, trying to heal muscle and you know bone and whatever else is going on inside your body, yeah. you got two processes running at the same time. It's got to make it sluggish. The thing is, with leptin resistance, based on the research that I saw, you can either be overweight or underweight. Yeah, well, I've always had this underweight thing. Hey, that can actually be a factor, uh, highly influenced by leptin resistance. Interesting. So you can actually do the same thing. To fix being overweight as being underweight. As being underweight, yeah, yeah. Because there's, <laughs> really there's people like me. Like if I stop yeah. training, mm-hmm. exercising, I get skinnier. Yeah. Right. And the only way that I put on weight is if I eat a mm-hmm. lot and, and hit heavy. Mm-hmm. And I don't like hitting heavy. My body doesn't feel good when I do really heavy weights. Yeah. I'm more of like a, an endurance, you know, sort of lighter weight, but a lot of reps, you know, mm-hmm. or a bike or a run or something like that. Um, but yeah. So how do you know if you're leptin resistant? Uh, one thing you can check is reverse T3. That's what I've seen. Oh, uh, it's a thyroid hormone. Thing? Oh, okay. Yeah. What is it? It's a thyroid hormone. Hormone. And you test for it. Yeah. So if you do a, like a, a blood panel based on thyroid, uh, lots of women are now doing it because okay. of Hashimoto's. Like lots of people are getting Hashimoto's and thyroid yeah. issues. My auntie's got thyroid stuff. She's got to take mm. drugs every day for it. Yeah. Polythyroxine. Um, but you can get a reverse T3 checked. If you already have it, it's a good idea. But yeah. um, if you are underweight or overweight, 
it's likely that you have leptin resistance. It's likely. It's likely. And so who, you that's said why a, just about everyone that does this leptin uh, reset program reset, yeah. either loses weight or gets back to a more normal weight. Interesting. So if we wanted to try this, we, me, and whoever else is interested yeah. in this, do I have to be eating the meat, or that's I just got to eat? Yeah. So it doesn't just matter what I'm Google eating. Google leptin reset. Leptin. L e p t i n. Yeah. Leptin. Okay. Leptin reset. Leptin reset. Have a look at it. Uh, See if it resonates. Yeah. Yeah. All right. See what you think. So I can still be eating the same as what I'm eating. Yeah. Uh, if you are overweight, it's better to be lower carb for the leptin reset. Gotcha. If you're underweight, yeah. it's less of an issue. Okay, cool. Yeah, I eat a lot of carbs, eh? Mm. So I, I don't eat too much meat. I'll eat meat a few times a week, but I'm pretty much vegetarian most of the time. Okay. And if it was my wife's choice, I'd be bloody vegan <laughs> the whole time. I've got to like fight for those a little bit. It's yeah. just my body. I've been vego-vegan for years, tried different things, never gone full mm. carnivore. Um, but yeah, so, but effectively I could stay what I'm doing, what I'm eating, but as soon as I wake up, because usually I wake up and I drink a litre of water, mm -hmm. I exercise... I do all that sort of stuff. And then later, an hour and a half later, I'll eat some food. And I'll usually have porridge or, mm. or eggs and avocado on toast, like a whole meal, um, whatever the bloody thing's called, sourdough thing, Yeah, right? Uh, that's what I have for breakfast. And my oats, you know, they're like mixed grain oats sort of thing. Mm. I can still do with that, but do it Not necessarily. Away. No, okay. So the thing is with the leptin reset, it has to be protein or fat. Ah, in the mornings. Yeah. Okay, why? So it either... Don't ask me. Re read the research. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Neuroscientist. Let's go. Okay. Um, because protein and fat are the uh, uh, carbs can't affect your brain in the same way that protein and fat can. That's uh -huh. basically okay. what I understand is that protein and fat uh, can help you reset the uh, your brain circadian rhythm better than carbs can. Gotcha. All right. If you're eating fat, uh, I believe it has to be also combined with more light. Okay. So I'm sort of, See it's been sun, a while since I read light. the research, yeah. but basically, yeah, if you're doing sunrise, it's okay to do more, more fat. More but fat. if you're not, not waking up in time for sunrise and things like that, it's a good idea just protein. to, yeah, you have to eat a lot of protein. So if, gotcha. if you are going to do a protein shake, it's yeah. possible. It's not going to be as good, good as a quality protein. Salmon. Yeah. 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 What about eggs? Yeah, for sure. Good. I Yeah. My chickens yeah. produce a lot of eggs. That's so fantastic. I've got plenty yeah. of eggs. Okay. Yeah. You so could, I could do eggs. For sure. Eggs and avocado or something. Yeah. Minus the toast. Yeah. Smash Big. That. Bit of salmon. Yeah, it's worth a try. You know, this is the thing with life. If you don't try, you don't know. Yeah. You yeah. know, like this is, sounds like some serious research. Who, is there a researcher in mind? Yeah. So the guy that brought all this together is Jack Cruz. Jack Cruz. I thought it would yeah. be. Yeah. He's the so, same one that did all the work on light and sunlight and yeah. ice bars and this sort of stuff that I, ah, cool. that really helped me when I was really sick. Yeah. Cool. Um, and he's a controversial guy. Like some of the stuff sure. he says, people are like, dude, you're crazy. What are you talking yeah, about? For sure. But That's why I don't uh, say, yeah. tell any, don't tell anyone to do this. Go and research it. Have a look. Yeah. If it looks like something you want to do. And helped you, all you're doing is recommending yeah. what worked for you. Yeah? yeah. Cool. So ice bars you don't need right now, but you recommend them for people? Yeah, if you have a mitochondrial problem. That's the thing. When I was really sick, it was a mitochondrial problem. It was okay. that my mitochondria couldn't produce enough energy. Gotcha. So all of my complex functions, organs, uh, bacteria, all these different sort of things, how I was dealing with basically the whole thing, the, the system that's my body yeah. wasn't working properly. Mm. That was because I didn't have enough energy. Mm. So to increase the amount of energy, I did ice baths because when you cool yourself down, your body has to heat yourself up with infrared light. That's how we, that's why we're, how we heat up. And, and the body's creating infrared light yep. itself yep. from the mitochondria. Yeah. And to tell people what mitochondria is. So mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's what produces all the energy. In every cell of the body. Every cell, yeah. yes. So uh, mitochondria, basically, it creates energy uh, through uh, processing food, doing all that. It has to run electrons across uh, a system. It's been a while like since a I looked rod. into it. Not really, no, um, okay. but yeah, Man, we don't. It's, know. We were, it <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's fascinating though. So effectively, yeah. the mitochondria is in every cell, and it's what's producing the energy for that cell. Uh, yes, mm, got a feeling it isn't in red blood cells. It's been a long time since okay. I looked into mitochondria. All right, but so yeah. it might not be in red blood cells, but your yeah. body's full of mitochondria. Basically, it's the powerhouse. I I had I 
did as much tests as I could. I did as much blood tests, uh, physical tests. Yeah. I, I thought, okay, if I'm if none of these pills are going to work, I'm going to try to address what's what's creating energy, which is the mitochondria. Yeah, and I'm going to try to fix those. And ice baths were what came up as the best option. Big part of that. Yeah. So ice baths help to shrink the mitochondria or mm -hmm. the cell itself, which means the electron doesn't have to move as far. Yeah. And then it produces energy more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So after ice baths, you felt you had more energy. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, with, um, what's the guy's name? Wim Hof. Yeah. Man, ice baths are popular everywhere yeah. these days. He's yeah? awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. I love the guy. 100%. The breathing. I want to set up an ice bath at my house. Yeah. I've been talking about that Should for months it. and I still haven't done it. I've got to do it. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things. But yeah, I really want to do it. Mm. Um, get into it. And then the blue blocking glasses and the no blue light at, lo at night. That, that fixed the insomnia part. Insomnia part. Yeah. Okay. So I had insomnia for about yeah, two years. While you're going through all bad. the health stuff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And so the the blue light after night is it mm -hmm. all the circadian rhythm? Yeah. Same system. That. Anything to do with mitochondria? Uh, yeah. When you have a messed up circadian rhythm, your mitochondria okay. are less likely to work as well. Because we've all heard there of the circadian rhythm. Yeah. Like this for sure. is a big big yeah. thing. But you're saying leptins potentially can um, the leptin reset can get the circadian rhythm back. Yeah, sun gazing sounds like absolutely that's a great mm -hmm. way to do it, and then the um, no blue light after dark, right? Which means screens, yeah, the normal lights in your house, yeah, or blue light too, right? Yeah, all that artificial light, and the body's like it's still daytime. How did daytime get so long? Yeah, right. It's like why is it daytime at eleven p.m. still, and I'm you know at six a.m. <laughs> there's daytime again, and then our body thinks it's summer. Forever. Because we also have, yeah, yeah, because we have the summer winter cycles as well yeah. in our body. The body knows the summer rhythm cycle mm -hmm. for sure. But we don't have that anymore, right? So the body's just on this constant yep. burning summer, summer, summer. When's yep. winter coming? You burn out, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, so many interesting things. Yeah, there was this really interesting article I saw where they compared blue light to cocaine use. Whoa. Yeah. Blue light is bad as cocaine use. Not as bad but, but it has a similar direction. effect because wow. it actually it increases your bot your your attention it increases your uh, performance in the short term uh-huh yeah so it gives you more energy it, it wakes you up it creates cortisol in your brain yeah and then things start to happen like adrenal fatigue yeah. like insomnia yeah. all these sorts of things not good things yeah so get rid of the blue light is the best thing you can i mean that's what time, i did right? yeah. that's what i did i did the yeah. blue light i did tons of sun in the daytime yeah and I, yeah. Because you were white back Ice in the day, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you were so white. Yeah. You got 100%. a bit of a complexion. You're still white skinned. But For sure. You get I haven't now. been getting it as much. As much as I've you been, like, I've yeah. been too focused on the EOS stuff. <laughs> uh -huh, I've been indoors working. Yep. yep. Bit too much. Man, thank you so much. This Dude. has been really fun. Thank you. This has been really fun. Let's do a lot more of this. Yeah. Like, there's so many For sure. cool things to talk about from the health side of things and, you know, optimizing health and getting yeah. the most out of our systems to how do we grow businesses that make a difference in the world and create really great lives for people? Yeah. To entrepreneurship, social media marketing, blah, blah, blah. There's so many things we can talk about, you know, spirituality, so our connection to the similar universe. similar passions that we have. So many similar passions, right? Yeah. But uh, I hope this has been valuable for everyone. I know it has been yeah. for me. It's been very fun. How do people find you? You're not selling anything out there. This is the thing. A lot of people come and they've got a program, yeah. a course. You're just being you and having fun. Pretty much. But if people like the way you think, and they're like, wow, this guy's on it, 20 years old, he's living this dream. And the whole freedom aspect is important, right? Like we're the tribe of freedom for a reason. Mm. And you've got that mentality. You've got that, that belief system or whatever it is. Same as me, I don't know how. Mm. But you've got it at a lot at an earlier age than me. I mean, I, I guess I had it back when I was that age. It just wasn't as cemented into my consciousness. I've had to do more work. But I didn't have entrepreneurial family or influences around me mm. I'd work as you know and had to go and figure myself out um, but I love that aspect probably the most of anything you know the intelligence is there and the, the beauty and the, the, the heart that you that you are but that sense of it's a game I'm free I can do whatever I want and, and you know I just want to love and have a good time that's a gorgeous thing mate more people need that right I reckon yeah. we all need that and you got it you really got it. So let's do more of this. Let's do let's it. Let's bring you to more people, more conversations. But how Sounds do people good. find you? Uh, I'm not really online much no, right now. You don't want to be found. No. You're a bit of an enigma. No. I, um, Everyone uh, wants to be a personal brand and you want to be left alone. Yeah, pretty much. I just want to focus on studying my stuff and yeah. implementing EOS and uh, 
learning as much as I can. Cool. Yeah. Well, we'll bring you to the world through here. So yeah. if people want to find you, they'll find you in the podcast <laughs> with me. I've just got to get good. you to come up to the studio. Sounds more. good. Yeah. All right. We're cool. going, when are we going camping? We're going to figure next it out weekend. next weekend. Before I leave for Bali. I'm keen. You yeah. leave for, after that. It's my birthday after that. It's my We're birthday going after that. Weekend. Let's Maybe we should out. do a birthday camping trip. Birthday camping trip? We'll talk about apart, it. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have Love. a family now. You have a kid. I do. It's different, man. man. It's I different. I was a single man. Love you heaps, guys. Thanks for tuning into the show. If this has been beneficial, share it with someone that you love. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe or on iTunes or wherever you catch your podcasts. Subscribe. And let us know in the comments some of the things you took away, some of the things that you love about this. And uh, definitely, if you want to get Mr. Toby King, hint, hint on social media. If you want to go and find him, uh, please do. But yeah, if, if you anything, leave it in the comments. We always read the comments and respond. I love you, man. This has been awesome. Thank love you, you too, so much. Man. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers. Hey, if you loved that conversation, you are going to love the conversation in Tribe Social. Tribe of Freedom's own social media network, unbiased, uncensored, where you and I get to go deep on the things that really matter. So head over to freedomnow.com. You'll see the link in the description to freedomnow.com and come and join this movement. We need you and your energy and your tribe of good people around you to come together, to work together, to make this world a better place. To freedomnow.com, bring your energy, bring your passion. Let's have some fun. Love your heaps. And please, if you haven't yet, as I said, subscribe, share this with someone that you love. Otherwise, I'll see you to freedomnow.com and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.